Hey guys, MC Stu here, and today we're going to talk about firing modes and how to extend them and get the most out of them. This was a suggestion from a YouTube member, Wolf Chris, to go over how to extend firing modes, how to get the most out of your firing modes. And in this discussion, we're going to talk about some of just the basic ones, so cannon scatter volley, uh, beam overload, fire at will, and we'll touch on torp spread just a little bit, uh, but really those main basic ones. So let's just start with what is a firing mode. Um, so if you have a cannon build like I have on this particular ship here, so it's a mostly cannon build. I have some other stuff on it, but inconsequential for this discussion. In any case, <laughs> cannons. Cannons are extremely powerful. They do a lot of damage. They're single target, like basically everything else in the game, except for the torp spread. Innately is obviously a multi-target firing mode, uh, which will hit multiple targets. By going and using something like Cannon Scatter Volley, you're going to hit up to three targets, spreading that damage around and being able to take down groups of enemies faster. Next, Beam Overload would be another one where for a period of time, 10 seconds, mine says 15, and we'll get to that in a moment, um, you will do a, an enormous amount of extra damage with your beam weapons. Um, or, you know, Torp Spread where you're firing at multiple targets instead of your torpedo that just fires out at one and hits one target. Um, fire at will, again, similar to Cannon Scatter Volley where you're going to just start firing at all the targets that are in range. That's not on this ship, but we'll get to that a little bit later in the video. Um, so what these do is these augment basically the, the weapons that you have on your ship. And what you're going to use is going to depend on the build of your ship. So if you're doing a cannon build with turrets in the back and maybe even a torpedo in the front, you're not going to want beam overload. This is kind of a hybrid build, so it's not really relevant for the, the discussion itself. But I had a, a combination of things on here, so it just made it a little bit easier to kind of demonstrate this. Um, so that's what your, your firing modes are. There's basically firing modes for any kind of weapon in the game. And then there's also specialization firing modes, things like that. We're not going to get into that um, in, in this particular video, things like surgical strikes and those kinds of things. So for your, your basic firing modes, we want to be able to have these available and running to us as long as possible. So by default, pretty much all of your basic firing modes, cannon scatter volley, beam overload, fire at will, are going to run for 10 seconds. Now, before we talk about how to really maximize those to the highest degree, we need to talk about cooldowns a little bit. And I'm going to link two videos down in the description for you guys. One is going to be kind of a, a higher level overview that goes into Photonic Officer, which is a way to cool down your bridge officer abilities, make them ready for use again faster. Uh, Ox to Bat. Um, and then I'm going to talk now about Boilers because that's something that was added after I made the video on how to do cooldowns and the best ways to go about doing that. So a cooldown, essentially, if I click on something, it's going to have, you know, 30 second cooldown, whatever it may be. And then if I use something like Photonic Officer, that's going to increase this cooldown by two seconds or 2% every, every tick. So that's going to make this ability usable again faster. Um, so cooling down your abilities is the number one way to be able to get the more uptime out of any of your basic firing modes. Now, the issue is, is that if you're using, say, Photonic Officer along with a Boiler or something like that, there is a hard cap on it. Um, so let, let's take a look at Boiler because that's not covered in the cooldown videos. Um, so if we jump over to our traits, this is a lobby item. Um, Boiler, the Boiler effect, and what it does is it has a chance of 17.5% um, to reduce the cooldown time on your bridge officer abilities anytime you use a bridge officer ability. So if you're going through your rotation, you're going to be clicking a lot of bridge officer abilities, and every single time that that happens, you're going to have a potential to cool that ability down drastically. Um, so on this particular build, I'm using that, and it's not 100%, but it, it's it's close to if you have a lot of bridge officer abilities, but I'm using that in conjunction also with Photonic Officer, which again, refer to the video down in the link, and it'll explain exactly how that works. So what I'm using on this particular build here is going to be Boilers for that potential of cooldown, and then I'm also kind of augmenting that 
with Photonic Officer, which is another way that you can do it. If you are you know, a newer player, you're still leveling, you're gonna have uh, availability to Photonic Officer and I would use that right away along with any of your other firing modes in order to cool down your abilities until you either farm out or buy off the exchange uh, Ox to Bat duty officers or until you have Lobby if you decide to you know, get Lobby with the event or you, you know, open boxes or something like that and you can pick up Boinlers. Boinlers does work very, very well. Um, so once you have dialed in how you're cooling your abilities down, you'll find pretty quickly that you're able to cool down your firing modes to the maximum that the game allows you. The maximum that the game allows you to cool something down faster is going to be 50%. So with a firing mode that has a 30 second time frame, and I'm having, looks like Boinlers take effect there, but let's try another one. 30% is the base cooldown. My skill tree is affecting this as well. But if you're brand new and you click this, you're gonna have 30 seconds for cooldown for any of your base firing modes. And so let's say that you have a ship that has Photonic Officer 3, for instance, or even Photonic Officer 1. But if it was Photonic Officer 3, you're gonna most likely have this cooling down at 15 seconds. This stock only runs for 10 seconds, all of your firing modes. So there's basically a gap between the maximum amount of time that you can cool an ability down and the amount of time that the ability is active. And so that leaves a five second gap in between that where you do not have that firing mode active. And so the, the key is, is to be able to find a way to fill that gap. Now, because I can't make the ability be available now any faster than 15 seconds at 50% of its stock cooldown time, the only other option is to find ways to extend the firing mode of the particular build that you have. So the first things that we're gonna look at are gonna be scatter volley and beam overload. I think those are the most straightforward, and then we'll talk about fire at will and torpedoes. So with the cannon scatter volley, which is probably the most effective firing mode in the game, um, I preach a lot about beam overload because I really think for leveling new players, it's, it's super easy to use, it's powerful, and it's more than enough to get through any of the content in the game and do very, very well, and it doesn't take a ton of skill in piloting. Um, with cannon scatter volley, it's a directional firing mode. So your firing arc is going to be at, you know, 90 degrees. It's not very wide. And so your positioning is very important, but if you can get that down and make sure that your ship is positioned properly, when you're in battle, cannon scatter volley is going to be the best firing mode really on any kind of, of a level. And so what we need to be able to do is make cannon scatter volley last longer than what it otherwise would. And the way we do that for Cannon Scatter Volley is with a trait called Withering Barrage. That is this trait here. And what this does is it extends the duration of Cannon Scatter Volley by four seconds. So if you're able to put together a cooldown mechanism, either a combination of some of the things that I go over in the videos that are linked down below, or some of those in combination with Boinlers that we just discussed, uh, and you're cooling down your ability to that 50% hard cap, um, this will fill that gap in so that now the ability is gonna run for 14 seconds and you're only gonna have downtime of one second. And that doesn't seem like a lot when you're talking about four seconds, but if you're in sustained combat for a minute or two, that is a ton. I mean, you're only talking about having it down for five seconds or 10 seconds you know, maximum out of all of that. And the amount of damage increase and extra performance you're gonna get out of by just being able to have that up four more seconds is huge. Because as soon as it goes down, one Mississippi count and it's back up again and you're doing continual damage to multiple targets with cannon scatter volley. So let's talk about withering barrage itself and how to get that. So it comes from a number of different sources. Um, I can't remember the exact name, but basically the defiant tier six version or the legendary defiant version is going to have it. And then all of the other factions versions of that ship are going to have it. So if you have the legendary bundle, you will have this. If you have any of the other variants of the defiant, you would have access to this as well, as long as it's the tier six version. What's really nice about this though, is there's also a free way to get this. 
And that way is to have a KDF recruit. So there was a KDF recruit ran back in February. I think that was the third time or so they have run it. They have made clear that they are going to be running um, recruitment events uh, across the spectrum of all the different ones. More often, it used to be years and years and years between you know getting the same one back. So I would expect to see another one if you don't have a KDF recruit either before the end of the year or definitely right at the beginning of next year. Um, but when you have a KDF recruit and there's videos on this as well, um, you get a little transponder and when you click into that, it's going to have all kinds of different tasks and things to complete where you'll get extra goodies. And one of them is a tier six ship that you will get and is unlockable across your account. So if you know you really want this for another character, it's not just tied to that KDF recruit, which is really, really nice. Um, and so that ship is the the Machala, Machala. I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. The ship itself is okay. Um, it, it's definitely a watered down tier six ship, but it's definitely okay and you could build it to be pretty good. Like I said, the biggest benefit is that once you unlock the mastery, you are going to get withering barrage from it. So if you have a KDF recruit and you complete the task, you need to unlock it. And they're pretty easy. I mean, I, I was able to unlock it with very little effort. It didn't take me very long. I mean, literally like a day or two. And that was not even playing a bunch. Um, then you can unlock that and then have the trade available to you. Now, if you are a newer player and you know, you're know you working on a Fed character and you really want to play Fed, you don't really want to play KDF, as long as you roll one of these tunes un and you unlock the ship and then you do have to fully level your KDF tune. And once you do that, that unlocks cross ship playability which means now you can claim a Klingon KDF ship on your Federation tune. You can fly it to unlock the trait and then you can put it away or delete it. You can always reclaim it again later, but basically you can then, you know, pull that ship and unlock the trait on any character you want to. If you really don't want to fully level up your KDF character and uh, you just want to play it enough to unlock this ship, which again is very, very easy. You'll have it unlocked well before fully leveling it. You can buy a cross faction unlock in the C store. I think it's 20 bucks, 2000 Zen, I believe. Um, but that is doable for free as well. If all you have to do is get a max level KDF character and that will automatically unlock the cross faction uh, ship flyability across your entire account. So if you don't want to wait, you can pay for it. If you want to just grind through it, you can just play through the KDF and fully level that up and you will have it either way. And I would recommend, even if that's not something you want to do right away, the KDF uh, you know, storyline and everything is excellent. I, I, I didn't play it for years. I, you know, after starting the game, it was years before I played it the first time and I should have played it sooner because it, it was, it was really, really good. Um, completely different, obviously from the fed side. Um, but uh, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed that. So this firing mode extension, withering barrage for cannon scatter volley is available to everybody for free. As long as you have a KDF recruit and again, if you don't have one, if you're just brand new and starting out, uh, you will have an opportunity to participate in, you know, getting one next time they have an event, which again, I, I don't think will be too long before we see that again. Um, so this is really nice that they've added that in. It essentially guarantees that you're going to have, well, it guarantees depending on how you set up your cooldowns. But even like I said, even if you had, um, uh, photonic officer two, probably a little bit better. You're talking about having a downtime of about one second and every few cycles on, on the photonic officer, uh, you might have a couple more seconds down. Um, but the amount of time extra that you're going to have this uh, ability up, you will notice a difference. You'll notice a difference, whether you're a DPS chaser, whether or not you're casual, whether or not you're just playing through story missions, it makes a huge, huge difference. So I definitely recommend grabbing that if you're putting together a cannon build. Next, let's go ahead and talk about beam overload. So with beam overload, we're basically looking at the exact same kind of scenario as cannon scatter volley. Cooldowns are the same methods, methodology, different options for getting that ability to cool down as much as possible with the same cap of 15 seconds. And we have a runtime of 10 seconds on beam overload. And so what we need to be able to do is extend beam overload just like we just discussed with cannon scatter volley. 
And so the way to do that is again from another trait. Now, unfortunately, there is not a free option for this. Well, let me take that back. There's not just a direct free option for this. You could get uh, from your event Lobi and pick up the Lobi ship that you would need for it. That ship is the Zendi Primate. Uh, at, it's the Adalith Dreadnought Cruiser. And it is going to come with this trait here, which is Super Weapon Ingenuity. And what this does is this extends beam overload by five seconds. So this particular trait completely fills that gap once you get down to 100% cooldown cap. Um, so this ability or adding this trait to this firing mode in your build will give you a full uptime of the 15 seconds and provided you're able to get enough cooldown to hit that 15 second cap, you would be able to run a build with beam overload that would never go down. So that would constantly be up and running. I personally really like this. I kind of go back and forth. I mean, if I'm trying to push numbers, it's Cannon Scatter Volley. But I mean, this is my free to play account. I picked up the, the Zendi um, Primate ship from the last event. I picked up the Lobi and picked up the ship. And on this, you know, on this free to play ship, and this is a tier 5X upgraded. I've played this account for a couple years now. I've spent zero dollars on it, and I've done over 200 in a parse run, 200,000 uh, with beam overload, and and that's not even with dual beam banks. Um, so you can do very well with it. I personally like the the broadside kind of beam boat. I know it's not quote unquote meta, but I think it's fun, and that's all that matters. And always remember that when you're watching my videos, I'm I'm not telling you what you should do. I'm just telling you if there's something you want to do, here's some ways that you can go about doing it. The way you play the game is up to you, and as long as you're having fun, <laughs> you know that's all that matters. So if uh, min maxing and chasing the big deeps is how you have fun. That's awesome, no problem. If you know you, you just want to live the dream and broadside, that's awesome, and do that as well. So I just want to clarify that it's been a little while since I've said that, so I just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page here. So I picked up this trait from um, earning it through uh, getting the ship, earning that through the lobby that you get from the year-long campaign. Went ahead and picked it up and put it on this build. And I am able to keep just about, since I do have Boinlers as well, I picked that up with the Lobi from that event as well. Along with Photonic Officer 1, I'm basically able to hit that maximum cooldown constantly of 15 seconds. The firing mode lasts for 15 seconds. And I am able to have this firing mode beam overload up indefinitely. And it's awesome. I love it. Um, so it's pretty straightforward in the same way that basically you would do Cannon Scatter Volley. It's just Cannon, cannon Scatter Volley. There's you know, an additional free way to get it because you could also, if you don't have an event, uh, you know, and you need that, that, that firing mode extension and, uh, you don't have a, a Klingon recruit from that event. You could also use your, um, you know, event long campaign reward for two of the C store coupons and pick up one of the mini ships that are in game, uh, that also come with that trait. I'll link down in the description, um, all the traits and their wikis, just so that, you have uh, you can click on those and get a list of the different kinds of ships that uh, are going to have those. This the primate ship is the only one that has the beam overload firing mode. Cannon scatter volley with the withering barrage. Like I said, there's like three or four ships at least that have it. Um, so I'll link that down so you can take a look through that and decide if you don't have it. You know if if you do want it, which way makes the most sense for you. All right, let's uh, move on and talk about fire at will and torpedo spread. These are kind of unique in the way that you can extend them uh, compared to the other two abilities we've already covered. Now I'm throwing in Torpedo Spread because it kind of ties in with the trait. You don't necessarily have to use it for that, but we'll just kind of tie it in. Torpedo Spread is just is a different kind of a firing mode to where or in terms or comparison to energy weapons because it's not a sustained firing mode. You click uh, torpedo spread and it loads a spread of torpedoes. You fire them and then that's it. You wait for it to come off cooldown and you do it again. It doesn't you know, continually shoot out torpedoes while the it's active. So being active means it's preloaded with a spread and it goes. So it's a little bit different in terms of the, of the discussion with the energy weapon. So we'll start with just kind of focusing on the fire at will part of that. So there is no direct trait or ability that extends fire at will. Well, I take that back. There is one. So there, there's two 
abilities that affect this particular mode. And the first one we'll talk about is going to be redirecting arrays. If that's all you have, I would use it, um, but there is a much more effective way. So basically once per second, while um, Fire at Will is active, taking damage will add a third of a second to that. Um, that is very hard to take enough damage every second to get a third in order to build up enough to make this a full firing mode. Since it's only active for 10 seconds, the best case scenario is you could add what? Uh, 10 divided by three is three. So you could add about three seconds if you were taking sustained fire you know, from the enemy and bump that up some. And that would have to be happening every single second. And so number one, it doesn't extend it far enough. And number two, it's very, very difficult. I mean, forget about the whole surviving that part of it. It's hard to take a consistent amount of damage like that all the time where you can just count on this, you know, mode is going to be up. If you're in with a tank or someone like that, or, you know, you happen to go into, you know, a mission where you're just not taking a lot of damage, this is going to be useless. Uh, if it's all you have, use it because it's something and it will help, you know, in certain instances, especially when you're being damaged. What will work better than that and what I use and most others that are trying to to boost the fire at will, be it a tank or just a fire at will, you know, damage output. I, I personally really like fire at will as well. It, you know, reminds me of, you know, the shows when, you know, it's going crazy, fire at will, it's go time, right? I love it. Um, so I, I, I do it a lot on on my builds like this ship. This is the, uh, the Queen Anna's Revenge. It's kind of goofy to some people. I, I think it's a beautiful looking ship. And this is what I run for, you know, my daily driver uh, on my tank character when I just want to have a good time. It does well. It's tanky, but, you know, it, it's not really situated specifically for any kind of a role, just for having fun. But I do use this this same trait in a similar build on, you know, my tank builds or if I was putting together a uh, fire at will damage build. So the trait that we want to look at is going to be entwine tactical matrices. And this comes from the Gagarin. Uh, this is a sea store ship that you can pick up. And it's a pretty interesting trait. It's pretty versatile as well. Um, I actually picked up that ship on my free to play this year when they gave us uh, during the anniversary event, they gave us a, a free tier six coupon. I went with this one because this is very good for torpedo builds and for fire at will. You could even use it for, you know, a, a budget, um, uh, uh, cannon scatter volley build if you wanted to, but it's just so easy to obtain the, you know, the, the right one for it. But this is a still a, it's a very versatile trait. So what it does, and we'll just go off the tool tip here and then we'll kind of look at how we use it in practice. So when activating torp spread, torpedo spread, apply fire at will one and scatter volley one when activating fire at will or scatter volley, uh, apply torpedo spread one. Now this will vary a little bit depending on, um, I think what you have slotted, maybe, I don't know if this reads the same every single way, the way it's weird, it's our word. It's kind of weird, but essentially the way that I'm using it on this ship is that I will activate on my hot bar down here, fire at will three. Okay. And I will let that run. It's going to run for the 10 seconds, the, the, the base run time, it has its standard cooldown. I'm able to cool it down very quickly. And then as soon as that goes off, I will click, click torpedo spread. And that will give me another uh, boost or f activation of fire at will, but it'll be fire at will one. Now I wasn't able to click it right now because I'm not in combat. And so let me explain that. When I clicked fire at will, it gave me fire at will, but because of entwined tactical matrices, it's also giving me a torpedo spread one. Now, if I was in combat, that torpedo spread one would fire and this would no longer be locked out. So this is locked out now because I'm not in combat. I've clicked it and there's just a torpedo spread loaded, but it hasn't fired. So if I were in combat and I'll show some clips right now of me in combat with it, um, and I were to click the uh, fire at will, fire at wills going off. There's enemies in front of me and torp spreads will fire and immediately torp spread two will light back up. Now, that's nice. So basically, I'm getting a twofer at the moment with how far we've discussed this. So I click fire at will, I get fire at will, and I'm getting a free torpedo spread one. So the key for the fire at will portion of this is that when you activate it, you have your 10 seconds, it's running. And then what I'm going to do is as soon as this comes off of 
its activation, so I got three seconds, two seconds, one second, I'm going to click Torp Spread, which would be available because we would have already fired that Torpedo Spread, and that's going to give me Fire at Will 1. So now Fire at Will 1 is being activated immediately after Fire at Will 3 has been activated. And so what I'm doing is I'm rotating between the two. Now, where you have to be careful in the past, I could actually put Torp Spread on my bar and I could just rotate through it and it wouldn't, it would just work fine. The issue you can run into and why this is a little bit more complicated is that if I hit tor or if I hit fire at will and I were to click Torpedo Spread before that's ended, I would basically lose out on that fire at will one. So you have to wait for for your fire at will, your main, your your rank three of it to be finished. And you can see it down here on the bottom. Once it's finished, the moment it finishes, you hit torpedo spread, you're going to get your torpedo spread and you're going to then get fire at will one. So essentially what's happening here, guys, is that fire at will three is giving me fire at will three and it's giving me an immediate torp spread one. As soon as though the torp spread one is fired, my torp spread ability two is going to be available. And as soon as Fire at Will 3 has finished its duration, I can then click Torp Spread and it's going to give me my Torp Spread 2 and it's going to give me a free Fire at Will 1. So basically what we're doing for a Fire at Will uh, build like this is we're rotating between Fire at Will 3 or if, I don't know, whatever ship you're on, if it only has two, and between one, the free one that you're getting from the Torp Spread. Now another important note for making this work is that you need to have a torpedo slotted on the ship. So you can see because I'm not in combat here, this is staying blacked out for the entire 30 seconds. So if I click this, this is being blocked out for 30 seconds. Here's my free torpedo spread one. I can't activate torpedo spread two until this is gone. I don't have to wait 30 seconds. I just need to fire a torpedo. So you could use this without a torpedo, but you're only going to get that free fire at will one once every 30 seconds, because without having a torpedo firing, this is going to sit here for that 30 second duration. So again, if you're in combat and you are to click either one of these, you're going to have torpedoes going off as soon as they're off of cooldown. So this particular one here has a cooldown of eight seconds. It's firing every eight seconds. So that become, that's a non-issue. If you have a faster firing torpedo, then great. These will rotate even faster, but you cannot overlap them. That's the issue. We used to with um, torpedo build. So our main firing mode would be uh, high yield. And we would use concentrated firepower to help refresh or give us extra um, high yields. But at the same time, we were stacking up spreads by running um, not torpedo spread, but we were running like fire at will one and we were running cannon scatter volley one. And so what would happen is that we could click both of them. So let's pretend um, let's pretend, you know, this is uh, cannon scatter volley one. I click that I would get a torpedo spread one pop up here and then I would click my fire at will, and it would give me a two count of the torpedo spread. So I would have basically two chambered, and if I cooled it down fast enough, I could actually stack this up to up to like three of them. And they changed that, which probably makes sense because it was ridiculous. You would go up and you're just, I mean, it was nuts. You know, with four torpedoes in the front, you're just spraying out spreads like crazy. And so they changed it, and that's what affected this, where we have to, I can't have them on the bar. I have to be watching for it to come off. So on a torp build where we're running fire at will and we're running cat and scatter volley, just for the purposes of proccing torpedo spread one, I have to have one on my bar and I have to watch as soon as that fires, then I will go ahead and click can and scatter volley one and that will load up another one and immediately fire and then as soon as the next one's off cooldown i can go ahead and click this again it gives me torpedo spread one and it fires and then i can you know and so on and so forth we don't run the the uh the torpedo spread on a torpedo spread build or torp build and it seems counterintuitive but we wouldn't do that because it would then lock out our uh, fire at will. And so we wouldn't be able to have that rotation between those two abilities. So we're basically using two abilities, which we don't have any weapons of those type on a torpedo build, just so we can use that secondary proc. So as I said, it, it's a little bit more complicated than the first two abilities that we talked about and going into torpedoes makes it more complicated because that's that takes even more um, of kind of using the secondary ability of this particular trait. 
Um, but I wanted to kind of go into that just to kind of give a little bit more context into what exactly we're doing. So let's just come back to Fire at Will and just kind of recap on that because we are using it in the most simple way that we can with Entwine Tactical Matrixes. And that is basically activating our main firing mode just like you would any other time you're running that and as soon as that ability and if you look at these little things down here it'll show you these little these little tabs it'll show you i have four seconds left on fire at will and i would have already long fired this set of torpedo spread if i was in combat so as soon as that ability ends then i would go ahead and click the torpedo spread two and now i would have fire at will one up and as soon as this was back up and that was off from that, I would click the second one. So again, coming out of my mouth in my own mind, it sounds like <laughs> complicated, but trust me, if this is the direction you wanna go in terms of, of fire at will, this is the trait that you need to have. If if you are also at some point maybe gonna go down the torpedo uh, build route, you, you're gonna need this trait as well. Um, you know, especially, you know, in the end game and doing advanced or even elite stuff. Um, it, it, it's a great trade and it's really versatile because you could do the same kind of thing with cannon scatter volley, for instance. I could have cannon scatter volley here and then I could run the torpedo spread and that would still then give you cannon scatter volley one and you would rotate between the two. Withering barrage is better because I can keep cannon scatter volley of whatever ever rank I went up for you know that extra four seconds so I don't have to rotate between cannon scatter volley one and two. Um, so, but for fire at will, this is the most effective way to have the longest uptime for fire at will. And the added plus, you know, benefit is in the meanwhile, you're also rotating between, uh, torpedo spreads. And so you're getting twice the amount of torpedo spreads that you normally would, cause you're getting the free one and you're being able to keep, you know, one of the ranks of, fire at will up basically indefinitely as long as you are keeping an eye on the activation time of of fire at will so i hope that makes sense guys i know it's a little more complicated maybe that part of it may you know may call for a uh, you know a specific video but if you need help with that jump in the discord server the link will be down in the description and there's tons of people myself included in there I'd be more than happy to answer any kind of questions for you but if you were looking at any of those three types of builds, um, those are the, the main things that you're going to need for maximizing the firing mode potential. There's obviously a lot more that goes into the builds and different kinds of traits that are helpful for the different types of builds. Um, but those are kind of the 101 things. If I were going to start a brand new account today, um, and I know what I know, I would start with, and this goes a little off subject because I'm going to get into some other traits here, but I would start with... Um, energy weapon cycle uh, and the reason for that is because it gives us the negative 50 percent power cost and it gives us a 20 percent firing cycle boost um, and that's going to be huge on any energy weapons build if you're doing psi or you're doing torps it's not going to matter but if you're a new player th those builds take a lot of in-game resources and grinding and things like that so you're, you're not going to start off with a torp or a psi build maybe a psi build but they're a little more complicated but torps definitely not um, so I would pick up this trait and then whatever, you know, I was going to go with, I started on this account with beam overload and I picked up the, uh, the beam overload extension trait that we discussed from the Zendi primate ship. So, um, I think that covers it. That that's our basic firing modes, how to get the most out of them, how to keep that uptime up as long as possible. Cause that is number one. I mean, that is how you get the most out of it because you can boost it in every which way you want to. But if it isn't running for a you know a third of the time that you're in combat, that's a third less you know overall damage. So if you're able to boost you know your weapons with your tac consoles and with your MSEX computer or if you have a DPRM or whatever it is, your batteries, you're gonna get you know one third more damage just by being able to maximize the uptime of any of those main three firing modes that we just went over. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Like I said, if you have questions, check out the Discord server. Throw them down in the comments and do my best to respond to as many of you as I can. Uh, until next time, thank you very much for watching and have a good one. Hey guys, appreciate you watching. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, ring the bell, and sub to the channel for the latest news updates and how-to guides.